All right, uh, Dina, would you mind just badging in for me real quick? Okay. And again, what we're, oh, I'm sorry. So you just logged out. Um, Miss King. Oh. Miss King, who was just here. Okay. Um, so if you want to badge in again, it's going to prompt you to enter your username and password. So this is the same username and password, like, just like you're logging in at your computer. Okay. Um, no, I'm oh, sorry. sorry. I need to select it. That's my bad. Oh, and I can just do it on here? Or? Well, I bring the keyboard okay. just because it makes it easier to type. And so just the username, and then when you're finished, and then just your password, just like you're logging in at your computer. Okay. All right, so you're logged in. Okay. Um, so that's so what we just did there. That's Dina's first time badging in. So that you just have to do that the very first time. After that, once you've done that, you can come back and just uh, swipe your badge, and it goes directly into your print queue. I'm going to log out. If you want to swipe your badge, you'll, you'll see what I mean here. So now that you've authenticated, it takes you straight in. You don't have okay. to do that login again. Um, a question I get a lot is passwords change, and do you have to change your password every time? You don't. Um, this is connected to the Active Directory. Uh, so basically, when that's changed in the Active Directory, when your password is changed, it changes here too. So you don't have to worry about making those changes. Uh, I'll go ahead and unplug the keyboard because that's all that I use that for is just to make the authentication a little easier. Thank you. Um, so since we're logged in with Dina, I'll kind of just start showing you some of the features within the print queue. So every time you badge in, we've got it defaulted um, to where it goes directly into your print queue showing you any print jobs that you've sent. Um, if you had any print jobs in here, we'd be able to select it. Um, once you select it, you have these options down here at the bottom. I have some in here if you want to show that. That'd be perfect, yeah, thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, so Carol's got some stuff in here, and it's listed with uh, the so name Carter's of the document. I mean, there, that's better. better. Yeah. Um, so once you have a document, you can select it. Um, print and keep is the is the main print option I usually recommend. Everything that's been in your print queue for three days will be deleted after three days. Um, so print and keep just keeps it in there for, it resets it for I think 24 hours. Um, so it'll stay in there a little bit longer. Um, and the reason I, I recommend that, it's going to be deleted anyway. And if you print it out and then you decide you need more, maybe you hand it off the copies or whatever to to someone else and you can't just make a copy of it, you need to go back to your print queue. It's still in there for you. You don't have to go print it again. Um, so I just say print and keep because again, it'll delete it anyway. Um, of course, you got print and delete, which you'll just delete it after it's printed. You can manually delete items if you want. Um, and then if you go into options, once you've got something selected, what's pretty cool, this is referred to, Uniflow is referred to as follow me printing. So the concept or the idea is you can send a print job from your desk here at the central office and then you could go to Bob Jones, badge in at a machine and there's your print job on that machine. So your print jobs follow you around. You're not printing to a machine anymore, you're printing to a server and then it pulls your print jobs down wherever you're at. Um, so along with that follow me printing, your driver follows you also. So when you go into options, you can select that job and say you send that job as a black and white print and you want to change it to a color print, you can change it to color on the fly right here. Uh, you can change the number of copies. If it's five pages, you can pick a range and you say, I only want pages four and five. I don't want the first three. Um, you can add stapling. On the bigger machines, you have hole punch on those, so you can add hole punch to those. The smaller machines just have the stapling. Um, and those are the main things. Uh, you, can add, you can change it to two-sided. Uh, it's defaulted to be single-sided, but you can change it to two-sided if you want. And that's the top one, simplex and duplex. That's what that is. So you make whatever changes you want, and then you go to print and keep, uh, or print and delete, whichever you like to use. Um, and, and really, that covers printing. Um, so when you print, it's not, it's not coming out anymore. It's going into your print queue, and then you go retrieve it. Um, I did forget to go over select all right here. So you can sit at your desk and send 20 print jobs and then come here, badge in, hit select all, print them all out at once if you want. Uh, so it's just kind of an efficient way to, to you know, manage your time. 
Um, and then of course refresh. If you see something that's not in your print queue that you sent, you can hit refresh. If there's any kind of lag or anything, you can hit refresh and it might pop up. If you're like me and forgetful, then maybe you forgot to hit print. I do that all the time. <laughs> and then I go and it's not there. Um, embarrassed to admit that, but that's true. Uh, and then of course, as far as logging out on this screen, you can log out with this button. There's another button at the very bottom. You can hit the heart button, the ID button here to log out, or you can hit uh, swipe your badge and it'll log you out. So several ways to log out. Um, you are logged out automatically after 30 seconds of inactivity. Um, so that's why I kind of keep touching the screen here every now and again. Um, and I do, I do recommend try to get in the habit of logging out as you go. Um, like I said, you'll get logged out automatically, but it's just good practice to log out as you leave. Um, so as far as navigating away from your print queue, again, this is what you get as soon as you badge in. You get your prints. Uh, navigating away from it, you've got copy over here on the left, if you all can see that. Um, once you get into copy, it's fairly straightforward. Um, everything's defaulted to black and white, so you, can, you have to actually tell it color if you want color and that's right here under select color. Um, this copy ratio button, if you, if you want to make a copy from like a legal size hard copy document to letter size, you've got your shortcuts over here on the left to do that. And you can also do a manual adjustment right here. Um, select paper. So it's set up to automatically detect what paper size the uh, the copy job is and your print jobs so it'll pull from the correct tray based on paper size but if you want to force it to pull say you're making copies and you want to go on yellow paper that you've got loaded in tray 4 you can force it to pull from tray 4 um, so that's kind of how you would use this button here um, finishing so if you wanted to add stapling to a copy job that's under your finishing options here uh, staple and collate uh, next and then you get to pick you know where the staple goes out on the page um, and then you can do a double staple if you want for a type of booklet uh, and then I've been pointing this one out um, it's kind of a new feature it's called staple free stapling and it does kind of like a crimp um, and if you all would like I could show you an example if there's anything in here we can make a copy of <laughs> but it's basically the nice part about that is it, it saves you on staples because um, you know staples are a supply item that aren't included in the maintenance contract. It comes with 5,000 um, and they're right here. And it's just a little ink or it's like it's like an ink cartridge basically replacing it. Um, but the staple free stapling it's five pages or less and again it just saves you on that staple and it's kind of like a little crimp that it does. So. Um, pretty cool feature. Um, your two-sided option in here. So this is, you know, if you're wanting to make a copy from two-sided to two-sided, you would do that here. Um, another thing I've been pointing out that's big in the school is something I didn't really spend much time on before, but going through some of the schools, I've noticed it's definitely a need, and it's um, this book option to make copies out of a book. And it shows you a diagram, basically, what you're going to do. It, you lay the book on there, and it puts page A on one side and page B on the other side for a two-sided. Um, so it's a pretty cool feature that, to be honest with you, until we start working with the school system, we never really use that one too much. So, um, But it's, it's, a, it's definitely a needed feature. Um, if you go into options for copy, I, I always say there's four pages of options in here a lot of which you may never use, uh, but there's a few that I like to point out. Um, different size originals is one, and you can put a stack of papers that's, you know, some are legal, some are letter, it'll automatically detect what size, and it'll pull from the correct tray. Um, if you go into, you can add page numbers, uh, you can add a watermark, uh, you can add the date. Uh, this is, again, all the copy jobs. And then back to the uh, example of making a copy out of a book, you can do a race frame and there's a erase binding or erase book frame on here. So that's kind of a cool feature. 
Um, and then on the last page, I wanted to point out uh, Skip Blank Originals, and I'll, I'll kind of go over this again within scanning. That's a big feature they've added for scanning. Uh, but basically, when you're making copies, if you've got a stack of papers, some are two-sided, some are single-sided, and you want to get both sides, get, con get all the content basically, but you don't want those blank pages printing out, uh, you, you hit the Skip Blank Originals, and it creates one clean document. So you just get the content and no blank pages. Um, so that's a nice feature. Um, copy ID card. I've been pointing this out. It's just a, it's a clean way of creating a, a copy of an ID card, which apparently a lot of the locations do that quite a bit. Um, so it just kind of walks you through how to do it. You've got the, the orange arrow up here in the corner. Um, you put the card in there and it goes through again step by step. You do one side, flip it over, put it in the exact same spot, do the other side and it puts the front and back of the card on one page. So, it's a nice feature. Alright. Um, so that's most of the stuff I usually point out in copy. Do y'all have any questions on copying or anything that you normally do that you want to know how to do or anything like that? Questions. So mm -hmm. one, what if I'm printing a large job, let's say I have a big event and I'm going back and forth, back and forth, and I want to bypass the login. Is that possible? Bypass the login? I just want to have it open for 20 minutes because it's just a large back and forth. Unfortunately, there's not a way to do that right now. Okay. Um, if you have a need for something like that, um, I would I would talk with probably Aaron or Jolie okay. and let them know that that's a need for you. And we'll work with them to do you know whatever they need us to do. Second question, kind of the same thing. Um, mm -hmm. In the instruction department, we do a lot of printing sometimes. So if it's something large we're doing, and is there a way to automatically recognize the original? So if I'm printing from a printer, and if it's in color, I would like for it to automatically say color. Or if I needed black and white, then I'll manually go and read it. But kind of, that's kind of the assumption we usually operate on. Is that possible? Or is it possible for me to set my default on the color as needed? It I constantly go through, if I'm printing a large color job, I have to constantly go back and reset it on every document. Gotcha. Um, we can, that's another one, because there's, there's different print cues that can kind of be added. Um, and, and one that might work better would be like a, a generic Canon print driver. Um, and that's something we could look at if you and wanted that, to. That would allow us to print, set the parameters for our print job in the software at our computer, and then it go directly to the printer so that when you release the job, it has those settings instead of the Uniflow. You should be able to do that now. You, from still have, you still do it, but anytime you return, it's not set as default. You have to go back manually. Oh, I see. I see. Um, you could also create a, a, a print profile, and I'm pretty sure you can do this. I know that you can do this with the Canon driver. I don't see why you wouldn't be able to do it with this driver. Um, so if you, if you go into a print job and you're making all these edits, right, um, you can create a profile, and maybe it's called monthly newsletter or whatever the job is. Um, you select that profile and it changes it. You've saved those settings under that profile and it changes them to those defaults. And then you can use that. But then, you know, once you close out of your driver or that program, whatever you're printing out of, it'll go back to defaults. Um, but you just select that profile again when, it, when you need it. And that way you're not going into printer properties and changing all the settings every time. So that would be one of the choices on the drop down, in the menu drop down. Yeah. It would be like an Italian print. color print. She would choose that every time she prints something so that... Right, there's... Um, mm -hmm. color. Yeah, there should be a drop down for, for printer profiles. And again, if you want, I can help you with this. Uh, we have help desk that can help with this. Um, and again, I want to make sure that I'm thinking of it correctly because that's how the Canon driver is, but I'm pretty sure this uh, Uniflow driver should be the same. Um, so let's take a look at it because we can, there's definitely customization that we can do um, to make it a little, make life a little easier. Mm -hmm. But as far as the not having a badge in and all that, that's definitely a, an Aaron or Jolie question as far as what your options are there. Okay, so hopefully that's helpful. But um, if you have any time after this, I'd be happy to look at your print driver with you and, yeah, sure. and see if we could set up a profile.
Um, that's a good question. Um, we got out. Does anyone mind badging in for me, please? <laughs> so that's that was. Let's see. We just went through copy. Um, let's go into scan and send real quick. Um, so again, we're we're badged in under Dina. So so what's cool about scanning, and I kind of mentioned earlier, with with this system, you're going to get a lot of scanning features uh, as a benefit. So. So because we're scanned or badged in under Dina, we don't have to go through the address book and find Dina or anything like that. We just hit send to myself and there's Dina's email address and she can send to herself right away. Um, the green light on the start button is lit up so it means it's ready to go. You just have to hit start and you're, you're off to the races. Um, you do still have an address book if you want to scan something directly to someone else. Um, and it's pulling from the whole Active Directory, so you're students getting there, students, right? everybody. Oh. So there's a search down here at the bottom, and this is probably the best way to do it. So if you're if you're scanning to directly to someone frequently, mm -hmm. yeah. you can create a one-touch button for them, almost like a, a quick dial, Active mm -hmm. or little directory for you, personal directory. And, and so you don't have to go through the address book every time. Um, but to, to search for someone, let's see, I'm just going to go M-A-R-C. I don't know. So we got Jonathan Mark, Marcus, Logan Marcus, so a few Marcuses. Um, so say I wanted to send something to, to one of these folks, I would select the one I want, I'd hit OK they're selected and now when I scan that document to them with your old system it was showing us coming from the copier yes so now that you're badged in it's going to show us coming from you so they're not getting just a random attachment you know from a copier can we change the subject line you can so that's to add to to this um, that's you beat me to the punch but that's my <laughs> next that was my next uh, thing so if you go into options it's on the second page there's this subject message button right here you select that subject you could put invoice or mm -hmm. whatever the document is put that name and then you can add a little message you don't want to type full email because it's no fun typing on these touchscreen keyboards um, but I mean just a quick message please check this out please sign return you know whatever the message is something quick and easy um, and then again you send it off and then the last part to that uh, is now that they've received it and it's from you they can reply to that email also whereas before if you scan something from the copier yeah. they wouldn't be able to reply to it um, so now it's now it's a, an active awesome. communication um, so that's it's a pretty cool feature that you pick up with the scanning um, and what, what did you click again one time? Which, from here? Um, so let me get back out. So, oh, to change the subject? Yeah, send to myself. Okay. So if you go to options right oh, here. Options. Okay. And so then second page. second page, subject message. Okay. Now, if this is something you do a lot, um, what we could do, you select, well, it'd have to be the same thing over and over. I was going to say we could create a quick menu button. And I'll get into that here in a minute. Um, it may not work for this uh, specific scenario as well, but it'd be better for like something like copy. But I'll go back to that in a sec. Um, the one touch here, this is where it's kind of like a, a quick dial or a, a speed dial type thing. So you can um, register someone to this, uh, to your own personal menu. Uh, if you select a, a, an open tile, basically, you go register edit, and then you can select a person from the from the LDAP and then add them in there. And it's that's how you can manually enter it if you just hit email, and then you can put in their information manually if you want, or you can go to register from LDAP server, and then it's going to go to the LDAP server, you search, you find them, and then add them. So if you want to go that route, that's a quick way to kind of save your favorites for anyone that you would scan to. Um, 
But you still can't send something to somebody outside of Madison City? You can. So you can, can send. you can actually manually type in, say I wanted to send something to a parent, rather than having to scan it to myself, unattach as PDF, and then put it to an email, I could just send it directly to them? Exactly. Their email? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we sent something to me the very first day that we had this set up okay. to my email address. Um, so yeah, you can send outside. Were you not able to before? Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't think so. No, we don't. Gotcha. Um, yeah, you can do that. So. Okay. Um, and, and really, that I mean, it's it's a cool feature being able to scan and send a subject and everything. It depends on how much, I think, how much of a message it's going to be. Uh, I think, for the most part, I think probably the preferred method is still send it to yourself and then send it as an email or, or something. But if I don't know if you're walking past here and you just want to send something quick and it's a real short message. That's definitely a, a quick and easy way to do it. So, um, and again, that was under options for the subject and message. Um, it's defaulted to color. There, there's no charge or anything for scanning, so it doesn't matter if it's color, black and white. It's whatever you want. The only difference is, you know, color scan, it's going to be a larger file size when it's color. So if you're trying to minimize that file size, you can go to black and white or, or, or grayscale. Um, same with the DPI here. You can change the DPI to a lower DPI um, for a smaller file size. Uh, this PDF compact button, I'm going to point this out real quick. So this is where you can convert it to a JPEG or a TIFF, XPS. It's going to be defaulted standard PDF um, for scanning, but if you ever need that different file type, you've got that at your fingertips here. And then OOXML, I want to point that out. So here you can actually convert it um, to a Word or PowerPoint document on the fly. So what that would do, you'd scan it in, scan it to yourself, and then you'd open that up, that document you'd open in Word rather than your PDF viewer. Uh, and that basically just gives you the ability to edit that document if you want to. It's pretty cool. So yeah. currently, like if you're going to send a scan, you open it up as a PDF, right? Right. And you can't really edit it. Depending on what kind of PDF software you have, there's minimal edits that you can mm -hmm. do. Um, but if you want to open it up as a Word document and make some edits, you can do that with this. It like identifies the characters on the page and converts it into Word documents. What if somebody scans it to me as a PDF? If you someone can, scans you can print it. it out and then come back here and scan with that feature. <laughs> well, we really need to get you the PDF software that's that will convert it. We need, yeah, <laughs> we need to go beyond that, right? Um, but, uh, but yeah, technically you could do that if you wanted to. Okay. Um, but the idea is if you got a hard copy of something, and let me throw a quick disclaimer in. If, it's, if the hard copy looks like it was made in Excel or something mm -hmm. like that, it's probably not going to format quite right in Word. It'll try, but it may come out looking kind of funky. Um, so just just know that moving in. But but if it looks like a document that was created in Word um, and you want to convert it into Word and open it up in Word when you pull it up, you shouldn't have any problem with that. Uh, same thing with PowerPoint. If you go to a conference and you get uh, a presentation printed out for you and you bring it out, bring it back, and you want to scan that in and open it up in PowerPoint and make some edits, uh, you can do that. So uh, so that's that's what that does. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? Um, there are certain things, so um, Reva over in um, uh, the superintendent's office, is that right? Not, not in the superintendent's office. Over at the annex, I'm sorry. Um, she she was interested in that and there was an invoice that we sent through mm -hmm. so the invoice had a barcode at the top and it had a signature a digital signature at the bottom mm -hmm. it formatted everything just fine which I was kind of surprised because it had you know it was probably created in word just with like you know charts and or graphs or whatever um, but it didn't know what to do with that barcode mm -hmm. up top so it was all weird looking uh, and then the the digital signature, it it put like a target type thing, like so it wasn't gonna fraudulently, you know, print out another signature. So so it recognizes those characters in a sense, but it won't print them. If that makes sense. Um, 
So moving on through here, uh, OCR searchable, something I wanted to point out as well. This basically, when you open it up as a PDF, in your PDF viewer, you've got a search box. If you have OCR searchable uh, selected when you scan it, when you open it up in your PDF viewer, it'll be a searchable text. So you can search that document for how many times you know, Madison City School shows up or whatever, and it'll find it in the document for you. Um, you can do an encrypted PDF, which I'm not sure if you all have any use for that, but it's basically you could attach a password to the PDF and say whoever opens the password has to know, or whoever opens the PDF has to know the password in order to open it. Um, so you've got some security built in there. And then also a digital signature um, for PDF. Um, so again, you've got two-sided. Um, if you want to, if you're doing a two-sided document, you can select two-sided. And then if you're doing a stack of two-sided documents, like I said earlier, and some are single-sided, uh, you can also select the skip link originals. And you just hit OK, uh, and that way it's going to read both sides and just delete any blank pages. Uh, also with the document feeders on these, um, it's referred to as a single pass document feeder, so it takes both sides on one swipe when you select two sided. So it's not going to feed it through to get one side and then feed it back through to get the other. So it's one swipe for every page and gets both sides and it, it just speeds up the, the document feeder. So um, Let's see here. So that was scan and send. Um, again, we badged in, we were in secure print, or you're in your print queue. If you hit the secure print button down here, that just takes you back into your print queue. So if you need to navigate back to your print queue, that's, that's where you go. Uh, I had mentioned quick menu a little earlier. Uh, so the scenario here would be, let's say we want to make, let's say we have someone in the office and they make, I don't know, five card copies a week. They constantly have to make copies of ID cards. So we're going to go into copy, we're going to go into options, and it's the very last page, that fourth page in options. We select copy ID card, we say OK, and we're, we're this is basically to save us time, so it's a, it's a shortcut that we're going to create. Um, so this is something we do daily, you know, all the time. We don't want to have to go to that fourth page of options every time to select this. So we can hit this gear up in the top right corner and register to quick menu. Uh, once we've done that, it shows us our settings that we've got selected. Uh, it shows me I got copy ID card, it's in black and white, uh, paper size, so on and so forth. I hit next. This next page just shows me how it's going to display basically. I hit next again, then I get to pick you know, where that is saved within the quick menu. You just pick one that's not registered, you hit next, and then I'm going to say, I'm going to name it copy ID card. And Dina, do you mind if I create that's a quick fine. menu? I can delete it, so um, I'm just going to put ID card. Okay. All right. So now it's registered. I'm going to close out of this. I'm going to hit the reset button. I'm going to go back to secure print, just like we badged in. Okay. So you're badged in. You're at your secure print queue. You want to make a copy of an ID card. You go to your quick menu button, and there's our ID card right there, the one we just created. You select it. Shows you the settings. Yes. And it says load paper. So load paper letter. Looks like we yeah we need some paper. So um, can you get to it without me moving that camera? You think? Um, yeah, sure if you don't mind, yeah. sorry. Okay. So, anyway, now that we've got paper, 
the green lights on. Um, so that means we're ready to go. So if you wanted to make a copy of the ID card that's on the glass, you would be good to do that. So, and again, it just kind of walks you through it when you do that. Um, does that kind of make sense on how to register quick menu and all that? So I just hit reset and that just, when you hit reset within any of the applications where you've made any changes or anything, it just takes it back to the default settings. So. Um, finishing, let me go over the finisher here real quick. Um, you've got a walk up stapler and I don't want to waste any of your paper, but basically if you, you put the document in here, anything you want to staple, uh, this button here will turn green, it'll flash and then turn green and after you've held it in there for three seconds it'll staple it automatically or when it turns green you can press the button and it'll staple it uh, the idea behind that is just if you come up with some originals that are stapled together that you want to scan or copy you take the staple out put it through the document feeder and then you want the originals to be stapled again uh, you can put them in here staple them uh, quick and easy so how many pages um i'll have to get the specs on that but i think it's somewhere around 20 or so but let me double check for you before um, but yeah I'll look into it but it should be it should be quite a few so uh, not a huge stack though I know I know some folks are running like 2,000 page print jobs and stuff that's what I've run into so definitely nothing like that <laughs> but, um, so that's your walk-up stapler uh, your paper tray here this is your output tray again this will it's on tracks, so it'll. If you got a large document, that that tray will go down as it as it fills up. Um, let's see. Uh, how many of y'all ever have to change toner or waste toner? Yeah. Um, so your your toner is right here. Um, we are doing auto toner for y'all. So basically, we have a system. The same way we get meters through your, it's called Imageware Remote with Canon. It just sends us information automatically, basically on you know meter counts and everything. It also sends us toner levels. Mm -hmm. So when a toner bottle gets down to 25%, we're going to be sending out a new toner. So it just does that automatically. So y'all don't have to order toner anymore. Um, you will get a notification when it's time to replace the toner. Uh, you'll get a notification when it's running low, and then when it's time to replace it'll say you know change cyan toner um, so to do that you'll have kind of like a little eject button down here on the bottom of the screen you hit that button and the lid on the cyan toner will pop down um, so you pull the old one out put the new one in and then pop the lid back up um, you can't manually pull these lids down or at least please don't try mm -hmm. to manually pull them down um, the reason behind the way it's designed or the reason it's designed that way is to be as efficient as possible to use every last drop of toner in those bottles um, you know don't want don't want to take a toner bottle out that still has you know half half thing of toner in it so that's part of the reasoning behind that just to make the machines more efficient and everything um, you got your waste toner down here uh, has anyone ever had to change out a waste toner yeah so you probably won't, on these machines you'll probably only have to change it out once within the lifetime of the contract um, these bottles uh, are supposed to, they change the capacity, they increase it by 26 times of what the old models were. Um, so it's two years on average basically before you have to change one out. So you should hopefully just have to change it out once. Um, as far as jams, turn around here. If you get a jam, the machine's going to kind of walk you through where it's at, tell you where it's at. Uh, the screen will look similar like to this, you know, to tell you what drawer to or what door to open up to get to it. Um, it'll and basically just tell you where the jam is to clear. Uh, once you've opened up the door and everything, quit looking back, it'll, it'll clear the jam. Uh, but that's going to be your main section right there to get those. And then you've got these down here as well for jam retrieval, and that's basically just for any jams coming up out of those paper trays. Is what that is. Bypass tray. I haven't pointed this one out yet. Um, your 
could watch the screen here. So when you put a piece of paper into the bypass tray, it automatically detects that you're putting something new in there. This is basically just the machine saying, okay, what are you putting in me? Let me prepare for whatever this is. Uh, it auto detects uh, the paper size that you're going to use. And it, to change the paper type, you just hit this change button here. Uh, let's say we're running labels. You would select labels. Okay. Okay. And now it's registered for labels. Um, so, you know, from your print job or copy, whatever you're doing, um, you can pull from that tray and, and print your labels. Um, what that's doing, it's basically just letting the machine know to run at a cooler temperature. Like for labels, it's saying we're, we're going to run some labels, run at a cooler temperature so you don't melt the glue. Mm -hmm. If you're doing like a glossy finish paper, it may tell the machine to run at a higher temperature so the toner sticks to the paper better. Um, if you're running cardstock, it's simply a straighter paper path um, so it doesn't have to weave in out of a paper tray through the machine. Um, so that's that's really the the main benefit or, or what you want to do with the bypass tray. Anything that's kind of special or different, uh, would re recommend to do it that way. So you don't put cardstock yeah. in the tray. I would not. Put, yeah. Always put it on. The yeah. Yeah. It it may be able to run one or two, um, but then I, I it may jam. Okay. So there's there's certain limits you can run out of the tray, and it's actually some of it's pretty thick, mm -hmm. uh, but cardstock is so rigid. Um, the straighter paper path you can choose is going to be your best best option. Um, that's going to be most of it. Um, I usually point out the glass just to say um, this strip of glass over here. Just you know, make sure this is clean. If you see um, like lines showing up on copies, just copies this would be the first thing we'd recommend to, to clean off. Um, if you clean that off and you're still seeing those lines, definitely log a service call. Um, and if it's prints and you're seeing those lines, definitely log a service call. But for copies, that's where the image is scanning across. So if there's a speck of dust, white out, staple, something on there, it's gonna take that one dot and drag it across the whole page. So that's why we recommend that first for copying. Um, and that should be most of it. 